We've just got back from our first ever cruise and we got a lot of stuff wrong. There's a lot of stuff we probably should have researched or planned before we went. And because of that, we've got a whole load of tips for you about things first time cruisers should know. 10 to be precise, because it's a YouTube video and that's a good amount of tips to have in a YouTube video. So let's get started with tip number one. And this is one of the few things on this list that we actually did, and that is arrive at the port that you're sailing from a day early. Goodness me, does this take a lot of stress out of the trip. This is one of the few things we did research before we go and that everyone was suggesting that we do this. And I would hate to think that someone is researching their first cruise and this is the only video they watch. And I don't include this tip so you don't do it, but it is such a stress reliever. I mean, most cruises do board in the afternoon. So if you live right, like super local to the to the port that you're sailing from, maybe you could just hop over on the day. If you're super local, you're familiar with the area, you know traffic times and parking spots and that kind of thing. But we were sailing from Southampton. We live up in the Midlands. It was a good three hour drive to get us down to Southampton. Uh, our boarding slot was 3.30, I think. I wouldn't have... I wouldn't know what time to leave. I mean, what do you do? Leave at 10 in the morning, knowing that that gives you time if there's bad traffic on the way. But if there's no bad traffic, you're then at the port super early with nowhere to hang out because you can't turn up at the cruise ship early. What do you do to kill time? But equally, do you leave exactly three hours before your boarding time, knowing that if you get stuck in any traffic at all on the way, you're going to be late and potentially miss your boarding? Just the stress would be... Absurd. And actually what we found when we were shopping around when we were booking our cruise is the price of parking at the port is roughly the same. At, certainly this applied in Southampton when we did our cruise, but the price, the price for us to park at the port, at the port of Southampton, would have been about £20 less for our trip than it was for us to park at a hotel and stay in that hotel overnight. So that's what we did. We drove down the day before, got into the hotel, got ourselves checked in, had a nice little swim, went and did a little bit of shopping, had a little bit of dinner, had a reasonably early night, had a little bit of a lay-in. And then the next morning, we were able to just wait in the hotel. And as part of our booking with the hotel, so we parked at the hotel, we stayed at the hotel. And as part of the booking, they also arranged taxi transfers to the cruise terminal as well. So we literally just stayed in our room until 12 o'clock checkout time. And then sat in the hotel bar for another couple of hours until our taxi driver turned up and just took us straight to the cruise ship. It was so easy. Do that. Don't try and find somewhere to park. It is a little bit more expensive, but nowhere near as expensive as you think. And like I say, wasn't that different for us to, from what it would have been for us to just drive down on the day and park at the port. And I'm so glad we did it that way. Such a stress reliever. Tip two, the checked luggage system is not as scary as I was led to believe that it would be. If you're not familiar with how the checked luggage works on a cruise ship, it is a little bit different to traveling any other way, traveling by a plane. Basically, you have your big suitcases, your checked luggage, like you would have on an airplane, but there's no limit to how much of that you can take. You can take as much as you need. I'll get to that in a minute, but you can take as much as you need. But then as soon as you arrive at the cruise ship, they basically take that check luggage off you immediately it gets put in a little chute loaded onto the ship and you don't see that again until later in the day it basically gets delivered to your room it's left outside the door of your room later in the day you don't have to carry all of your big heavy bags onto the ship and then when you disembark you leave the bags outside of your room the night before you disembark for us they had to be outside our room by 8 p.m i think that's a fairly standard thing and then the next morning, they'll be waiting for you when you get off the ship back in the cruise terminal. So to me, the pros, the, the idea of having to be without my luggage overnight for that final night stressed me out before we went. So I made the mistake of carrying loads and loads of carry-on luggage. So me and Anna both had a backpack. We both had our CPAP machines that we didn't want to be separated from. And we took a small rolling luggage as carry-on as well. So we basically had enough i mean we had the same amount of luggage just as carry on that we would take on a flight for a like 
week long city break. It's absolutely mad um, the amount of stuff we had. And we we didn't need to do it that way because you're not actually separated from the luggage that long. On boarding day, it was probably outside our room within an hour of us being on the ship. Our luggage had caught up with us. And then on disembarkation day, because you get off so early, we had to be out of the room at 8 a.m. It's not like you need stuff for that final day. So we didn't need to have a roll of luggage, backpack each, all that kind of stuff for that because, you know, we packed our, packed our luggage, left it outside the door. And then all we did after the luggage was gone, had some dinner, went to the casino for a bit, went to bed, got up and left the ship. So it was actually a really smooth, really easy process that's nowhere near as stressful as I thought it was going to be and links us in to tip number three, which is don't overpack. Don't overpack your hand luggage like we did. There's When we go on our next cruise, and we will cruise again, but when we go on our next cruise, there's going to be half as much stuff that I'm carrying on. I will literally just carry on like my medication, my CPAP machine, my laptop, and a camera. Just the stuff that I absolutely couldn't be separated from because there is always the fear that your checked luggage could go missing. It's really unlikely, but it could happen. So the absolute essentials... I'll carry on in a backpack. I'm not bringing a separate roll of luggage as carry on next time. We had like two days worth of spare clothes each. We had our swimming gear. We had a change of shoes. We had all our toiletries, all that kind of stuff. We carried on ourselves and we just didn't need it all. There was no reason to do that. Most of that could have been in our check luggage. And, you know, how many... How many pairs of trousers do you really need for that one overnight going into your last morning? Because spoilers, I wore the same trousers to get off the ship in the morning that I wore to have dinner the night before. I didn't need the spare pair. They didn't come out of the bag. So certainly don't carry too much stuff on and off the ship. Anna, bless her, was absolutely exhausted when we got on the ship because she was backpack CPAP machines in each hand because I was there with a backpack pulling a wheelie luggage and trying to vlog the whole thing with a camera as well so she was carrying loads of stuff and yeah we just didn't need to do that but also just in general we were very uh very cautious about making sure that we had clothes for all pot all potential scenarios uh we had we had enough clothes for if we got stranded on a desert island for a week you know we didn't need 10 pairs. I mean, we probably didn't have 10 pairs. We, we, it was a four night cruise. We didn't need seven pairs of socks. I didn't need to take, I had a warm coat, a raincoat and a leather jacket and a hoodie. Didn't need that, but wanted to, you know, what if it's raining, but warm, I'll need the rain jacket. But what if it's cold? I need the puffer jacket. What if I want to look cool? Forget all that. Just, you know, Pack as if you're getting on a plane. Just because you can take unlimited luggage doesn't mean that you should take everything that you own. I had a pair of shoes that I didn't wear at any point. Um, I had a pair of trousers that I didn't wear at any point. Multiple t-shirts and pairs of pants and pairs of socks came back completely clean, unused. And like I say, multiple coats, hats, didn't need it all. Make a make a list of all the things you could possibly need and then cut it in half because you are going to be stopping at ports. If you run out of something, you can just buy more of that thing. Obviously, take enough pants to wear a new pair every day. But if you're going for a couple of weeks, you can do laundry on board as well. There's a laundry room on every floor. So you could just take a, a couple of hours on a day halfway through your trip and wash all of your underpants. It's fine. It's what the laundry room is there for. And there's also an iron in the laundry room, which I didn't find out about until our last day. But that would have made some of my very creased looks that I had on that trip much less creased looking. So make use of the ironing board and the iron in the laundry room. So you can't bring your own, but there is lots already on the ship. Tip four, you can bring drinks on board the ship and you should bring drinks on board the ship. If you were following along with our TikToks while we were on the cruise, one of our most common moans that we were having was that we couldn't find anywhere to refill our water bottles. Our ship didn't have water refill points. I know some do, but ours didn't. And we didn't have a drinks package. We'll get to that a little bit later on. So we uh, we were thirsty occasionally. We were having to go up to the buffet, fill up glasses of water, use those glasses of water to fill up our bottles. There's a fridge in the cabin. We didn't put anything in the fridge the whole way through because we didn't have anything to put in the fridge. 
you can take drinks onto the ship. Depending on your cruise line and depending on whether you want soft drinks or alcoholic drinks, whatever it might be, there are limits. You can look up the limits on their website. And um, I know I've said pack a little lighter, but I think I would take some of the clothes out of my luggage and put a case of water in there so that as soon as I got on the ship, I could put that water into my fridge. And then when I've run out of that water, buy some at the next port that sells water and just keep my fridge stocked up. Because when you're in the room, when you're in your room and it's a five minute walk to get to the buffet and the buffet is the only place you can fill up your water bottle or get a free drink, because I don't want to go to Costa and pay for a cup of coffee. I'll drink the free coffee, free coffee, the included coffee that's in the buffet. Uh, but it's a five minute walk away and I'm a lazy man who's on holiday I'm not necessarily going to want to go and walk and fetch a drink every time I want to drink. Sometimes I just want a bottle of water to be in my fridge. I am led to believe there are ways to get this water delivered to your room as well. If you speak to your cabin steward, we saw our cabin steward once. The day we arrived, well, the day we got there, he came in and said hello. We did not see him again. There was never an opportunity to ask him for anything, so we didn't see him. I believe he exists because our bed kept getting made. Never saw him. Don't know where he hangs out. But yeah, you can bring your own drinks on board. Look up on your cruise and your cruise line how much you're allowed to bring and bring it because it's cheaper than buying it on board and much more convenient tip five we learned this one the hard way don't go to the buffet on the first day of your cruise we made this mistake we actually went to the buffet twice on the first day when we first boarded we were like free food went to the buffet it was absolutely heaving and there, there wasn't even much selection because everybody was grabbing it all there was queues for everything it was super busy um we had our fill and it was nice food and we did end up going back a little bit later in the day as well and again it was absolute chaos the first breakfast absolute chaos people queuing out the door absolute madness and it actually put us off the buffet for the rest of the trip and it wasn't until we got onto our last night that we ended up going back into the buffet again and being like hang on this is this is fine now where are, where are the queues this there's everything is fully stocked there's free tables what's going on there and i guess obviously what's happened is Everybody did what we did. They're on the ship. They don't know their way around, but they've found the buffet and they're hungry. So first night, they're going to eat there. First breakfast, they're going to eat there. And then as the cruise goes on, they figure out the other dining options and go and use those other dining options. So they start to get busier and the buffet starts to get quieter. If you want to be a smart cruiser, which is what we're going to be next time, figure out the alternate dining options on the first night. There's no hurry. You're not in any rush. You're on holiday. Go and find where you can have your uh, your sit-down meal in the main dining room on your first night. Or go and find one of the speciali speciality dining places and just go and eat there, away from the crowds, because the other people aren't doing that on night one. And likewise, breakfast, first breakfast, go to the dining room. Go to one of the restaurants. Don't go to the buffet. Get room service on your first morning. Whatever you do, avoid the buffet first breakfast because for the rest of the cruise, it was absolutely fine. It was just that first day when people didn't really know what the other options were. It was absolute chaos. And it, it that it kind of put a dampener on the first day not being able to find a drink and the chaos at the, our first two meals really made us thinking, oh, is, this, is this really for us? We had comments on TikTok like, oh, it's like Weatherspoons at sea. And it kind of felt like that. But then it very quickly stopped feeling like that. So if you want to avoid that, avoid the buffet for the first 24 hours that you're on that ship. The rest of your cruise, in my experience, you're fine. Go to the buffet to your heart's content. Um, but your, your first 24 hours, avoid it like the plague. Find alternate eating options. There are loads on the ship. You just need to go and find them. Tip. Six, I'm running out of fingers. Tip six is that the shops, and there are plenty of shops on board the cruise ship, but those shops are not open when you are docked in port because they're all duty free. Even the ones that you don't automatically think of as duty free, like there was one shop on our cruise ship that literally just sold like snacks and gifts. It's where I got Anna a little cuddly shark from. They sold Pringles and Mars bars. You know, it was, and the essentials, the stuff like paracetamol and mouthwash and so that shop 
Still a duty-free shop. So when you're docked in Portsmouth, when we were still in Southampton, when we were docked for a day and a half in Amsterdam, those shops are all shut. So if you want to buy anything, you either need to go and buy it from the bar or the coffee shop or places like, so if you're looking for a snack, you're going to have to go and get a snack somewhere else on the ship. Um, and then you are much more limited than you are when you're, I mean, you can, I couldn't find anywhere else you could buy Pringles, for example. Um, or you're going to have to leave the ship and go into port and buy something in port and bring it back on, which we did do in Amsterdam. But it's it's something to be aware of. Don't put off buying your, if you like room snacks, and we love room snacks, don't put off buying your room snacks until you arrive in a port. Get them while you're at sea if you want to buy them on the ship. Or if you want to be really cost effective, bring some on with you and then buy some at each port because that's a much cheaper way to do it. But there was the one occasion when we were docked in Amsterdam, we didn't get off the ship the first night or we didn't get off for very long. Um, and when we got back on the ship, we wanted to like buy a chocolate bar and there was nowhere on the ship to do it and it would have been we'd have to get off again and it was just a whole load of hassle so yeah be aware those shops are closed which also means of course make use of them when you're at sea if you want to buy yourself a fancy watch or some perfume or makeup or clothes or pringles while you're at sea the casino as well all of that stuff is closed when you're docked get off the ship but be aware the stuff that's on the ship a lot of it is going to be closed when you're docked and tip seven Talking of when you are docked, have a plan. Um, we didn't have a plan because we the uh, we were on a short cruise. The only place, the only port we were stopping at was Amsterdam. We've been to Amsterdam before. And being a Mr. Smarty Pants, I was like, well, I've been to Amsterdam before. I know what I want to do. I know where I want to go. I'm fine. We got off, we docked in Amsterdam at like 5 p.m. and we weren't leaving until midnight the following night. So we were there for a good day and a half, which is good because it allowed us to make this mistake. If it was if it was a cruise where you've only got four or five hours and we made and you didn't have a plan, that would be a big problem. Um, but we basically got off the ship, it was pouring with rain. Um, I had a look on Google Maps, saw everything that we wanted to go and see was miles away, like a 20 minute walk, 25 minute walk in the pouring rain. And we were just like, nah, we ain't doing this, we're getting back on the ship. And um, didn't get off again until the next morning. But in between those two disembarkations, I did a little bit of planning and realized if I'd have just done a little bit of research in advance, literally opposite. The cruise terminal in Amsterdam is a tram stop. That tram stop goes right into the central train station. And from the central train station, you've got all the other trams and can basically get anywhere. So everything we wanted to do, and this is what we did the next day, everything we wanted to do in Amsterdam, we could get to from the trams. And it was minimal walk, minimal rain, literally cross the road, get the tram, and then from there, go do what we want to do in different parts of the city. And if we'd have just done minimal planning to realise there was a tram stop just outside the cruise terminal, we would have had an extra evening exploring one of my favourite cities. But we didn't. We stayed on the boat, sulking about the rain, and um, it's absolutely our fault for not planning. And it's certainly something to bear in mind for our next cruise, because our next cruise is going to have multiple shorter stops where if we mess up that first time we leave the ship, we ain't going to be able to get off the ship in that city again. So a bit of planning is needed. Tip eight, dress codes are optional. We spent too much money before our cruise because when we booked it, we were warned as part of the booking, there is a black tie night. And that's pretty much all the information you got at booking. Um, black tie night. And these, this is the dress code for black tie night. So we went out and bought the stuff that we needed for black tie night. So I bought a tuxedo and a pair of patent leather shiny shoes. And Anna bought a dress and a pair of shoes and a bag. We must have spent, well, we did. We spent hundreds of pounds kitting ourselves out for black tie night. And then when black tie night actually happened... I didn't want to wear the shoes, so I didn't. I wore my trainers with my suit. And we act when we actually got out into black tie night, half the people weren't wearing black tie um, because black tie night is only in certain restaurants. So there were plenty of parts of the ship you could still... Like the general areas of the ship didn't need to be in black tie. It was only black tie if you wanted to go to one of the restaurants or wanted to go to the main dining room. 
the buffet, some of the other speciality restaurants, the the bars, none of that was black tie. And I would say it was probably a fairly even 50-50 split between people who'd actually done black tie and people who hadn't. And we do not enjoy doing that. We don't own those kind of clothes. And we felt really uncomfortable being dressed like that and um, learned very quickly that we just didn't need to. And in future, we won't bother. We won't take that stuff again. I actually left the shoes on the ship because I hated them so much. So there's someone working for P&O now, uh, wandering around in a pair of size 14 patent leather dress shoes. Um, unless they, I mean, I hope they just threw them away, but they'd never even really been worn. I tried them on and that was that. They were cheap. Don't worry, it was like a pair of 30 pound shoes. That's why they were so uncomfortable. Um, it, they were almost like novelty shoes rather than actual legitimate shoes, which is why I didn't want to wear them. But yeah, the 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 black tie stuff, the dress code stuff, it's all optional. Um, even things like wearing a collared shirt for dinner is because they have their evening, I think it's evening smart casual or something the rest of the time. Um, on our last night, I'd packed all of my collared shirts. So I went for dinner in just a t-shirt, like my normal clothes, my normal clothes at home, t-shirt, jeans, and trainers. And I wore that for dinner in one of the restaurants on the last night, um, went to an actual sit down table service restaurant, t-shirt, jeans, trainers, absolutely fine. No one batted an eyelid and Again, there was loads of people in there doing it. So the dress codes, very much optional. They're a guide. If you love dressing up and you want to have that fun, go and have your fun. Go and do your dressing up. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it. Don't spend loads of money doing it if it's not something that you want to do. Tip nine is use a travel agent to book. We didn't. We booked ours direct, and because we used our because we booked direct, we actually missed out on a lot of stuff that we would have had if we'd booked through a travel agent. We didn't really know what we were doing with our choice of room, so we didn't really pick our cabin properly. Luckily, we got upgraded to an accessible cabin, um, but we didn't ask for one in advance. So if it if it hadn't have been picked up as part of a accessibility questionnaire we would have been left with a cabin that wasn't really suitable for us and um, but because we didn't book direct we didn't get to pick our type of dining so we never actually ate in the main dining room because we were on a shared table in there it was like a table for six to eight people we went in there once and very quickly spun around and left because we didn't want to be at a shared table um, but if we'd have gone for a travel agent we could have specified the type of dining that we wanted drinks packages at no point were we offered a drinks package there was no way through the booking system i use on their website for me to add a drinks package through a travel agent drinks packages on board spend our next cruise we've booked um we did we have done for a travel agent and we've got the drinks package and we've chosen our dining we've chosen our cabin and we've been given some onboard spend as well and this is all stuff that we didn't have as part of our first cruise because in my mind i'd assumed using a travel agent would be more expensive than booking direct because logically if you book direct for most things like that's the cheaper way to do it. Flying for sure. You book direct. You who uses a travel agent to book a flight these days? It's more expensive. With cruising, it almost seems the opposite. We were able to get on our next cruise a better deal through a travel travel agent than we were able to through the cruise line directly. Plus all that optional stuff and choosing it to actually work the way we want it to work. I yeah, use it. Don't be afraid of using a travel agent. They are actually quite helpful, apparently, in this one unique scenario still. And then tip 10 is don't bankrupt yourself booking your next one because you will book a next one because it was awesome. We booked our cruise thinking that we weren't sure if we were going to like it or not. It was very much an experimental thing to see if we could cope with the seasickness. Spoilers, seasickness was fine. We didn't have a problem throughout. Um, and just seeing if we enjoyed the experience. And despite a lot of the teething problems that I've talked about in this video and that you would have seen in the vlog series, we absolutely loved it. It was a fantastic trip. It was so much easier and less stressful than flying. Our next series on this channel is going to be, we're going to Rome. We're actually leaving for Rome in a couple of days and we're flying on Ryanair to go to Rome and already I'm thinking in terms of just how different that experience is going to be compared to going on a cruise we from the moment we got in the taxi at our hotel in Southampton to being in our cabin on the cruise ship no more than 90 minutes passed I mean 
there'll be more than 90 minutes pass between us getting to the airport and getting on the plane when we go to Rome. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's a completely different thing. All of your food and drink and everything all included, just the ship stopping in the middle of one of the greatest cities in the world. It was just brilliant. It's it's fantastic. We had loads of fun. We can't wait to go on our next one. Like I say, we have now booked our next one. It's not for a while because the one that we really wanted to do, number one item on Anna's bu bucket list is see the Northern Lights. And we're a little bit late for booking a Northern Lights cruise for this year. Um, the best time to see Northern Lights apparently is like March, April time or then again in like october november time we can't really do october november because that's when i'm most busy with the football manager stuff on the main channel so i can't really go away in that final quarter of the year ever um so we're looking to do something this time next year we looked at doing a last minute one but we already had stuff like rome booked so we couldn't really book a last minute one for this year so roughly this time next year we're going to be going on a cruise to norway or along norway um basically in search of the Northern Lights. It's going to be 11 nights, I think it is. We're going to go right the way up into the Arctic Circle. Um, we're going to go and st stop at some awesome cities along the way. We're going to cruise through the fjords for part of it. And we are hopefully going to see the Northern Lights from a cruise ship in the middle of the ocean. And it's going to be absolutely awesome and we want to book a disney cruise we want to book a mediterranean cruise we want to book a caribbean cruise it is all we can do to not have like the next five years worth of holidays already locked in because we just want to do all the cruises straight away because we loved it so much so we're having to show some restraint and i'm not one for restraint if you follow my other stuff you'll have seen that me and anna are in the process of starting a new youtube channel about lego because we're absolutely obsessed with lego at the moment there is lego everywhere in my office currently um i'm not usually one for financial restraint or restraint of any kind um and i am having to show it with cruising because i am i am just ready to book 10 more right now so i think we're going to try and just have one booked in at a time and then when we get back from norway then we'll start thinking about the next one it probably means we might only do it every couple of years um but i guess that's probably fine because we do want to do other kinds of travel as well um we don't want to miss out on uh on some of the cool places that you can't get to by a boat, for example. Um, so it's going to be part of our travel mix going forward, uh, but it could very easily, we could very easily just turn this into a cruise channel and just go on four a year, but we'd be absolutely financially ruined if we did. I'm going to try and avoid that scenario. But hopefully you have found those tips helpful and hopefully you've enjoyed the series about the cruise. Like I say, next one coming up starting next week might not be Monday because we don't get back from Italy until Tuesday. So it might be a couple of days late, might be midweek next week by the time you get episode one. But next week um, we will be starting the Rome series as soon as we get back from Rome. We're off to Edinburgh. So that series will follow straight after. Never been to Scotland before. So that's going to be fun. And then before you know it, we're off to Lanzarote. So we've got three cool trips set up for probably the next couple of months, which will translate to two or three months worth of content on the channel as well. So plenty of travel stuff coming up. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're along for the ride. If, you, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up on it for us. Subscribe to the channel if you are new for all of that exciting stuff that's coming up. And thank you very much for watching.